So people always ask me, how do I shoot from logo range, right? One of the most popular questions I get, whether it's in my DMs or my comments, is how do I shoot from deep? How do I have that Dame Steph range, right? And shooting from deep, it's not just about having strong lower and upper bodies. It has to do a lot with technique. And it has to do a lot, which in my opinion is probably one of the most important aspects of being able to shoot from deep, and that is timing, okay? So today, I would like to go into great detail explaining to you guys what makes Dame, Steph, and other elite shooters be able to shoot from deep. What are some of the main keys and main details that go into their shots? So in this video, I will go over five key elements and I'll explain to you guys why they are so important if you wanna be able to shoot it from deep. So one will be my timing. Two will be my set point. Third one will be my momentum. Fourth one will be my follow through. And then fifth one will be my base. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time and let's get to it and let's help you guys to be able to shoot from that Dame and Steph range. So let's talk about number one key element, which is in my opinion, the most important element if you wanna be able to shoot it from deep and that is my timing. Here's what I mean when I'm talking about timing, okay? I mean the order of our shot and how we extend and when we start moving that ball up and when we release it, okay? So we have to time everything. So we want to make sure, right, like even on a regular shot, we want to make sure that the ball will always start to move first before our body will start to extend up, right? We never want to move the body first and then start to extend that ball up because now by the time the ball gets up to our set point, our legs will be fully extended out so now we won't be able to generate power on our shot. We won't have any kind of push left, right? So that's why you'll notice all the great shooters, I mean, even like all the good players, right? We all know that we have to start moving the ball and then like right before the ball reaches our set point, that's when we're gonna start that push with our lower body. So let's say my set point is like right about here, okay? So once the ball starts reaching like my chin, like nose level, that's when I'm going to start to extend my body as the ball continues to move towards my set point and then it's my shot. That's how I generate power on my shot, right? So I'm timing it. I don't play NBA 2K, but I've seen people play it, right? So it's almost like you have to time that shot to green it, right? Like you have to stop at that certain point. That's how you time it. So the exact same thing here, right? So we have to time, we have to time perfectly when, when to start going up with our lower body, right? So we're gonna have those hips loaded, knees bent, nice posture, nice base, and then we're gonna start going up. And once the ball close to your set point, that's when we're gonna start going up and getting into our shot. So everything has to flow, right? There can be any delayed action, any delayed motion in our shot on the way up. Because we're shooting it from so deep, everything has to flow seamlessly. Like that shot, that transition from having the ball here to my release, everything has to flow seamlessly. So that's what a timing of, of our shot means, right? It's just that, that perfect timing before the ball gets to my set point I extend it and then I shoot. So we want to make sure that is our number one priority if we want to be able to generate a lot of power on our shot. Now our second key element is our set point. So what I always do with my players, I always teach two different set points. I teach one separate set point for mid range close to the basket shots. And then I teach second set point for my deep long range shots. Right, so the reason why, from this area here in the close area towards the basket, I don't really need to have that much power to shoot the ball. I can literally just rely simply on my wrist flicks to be able to get the ball up there, right? So I can just have this much range of motion, this much range of motion on my shot, right? But I probably will struggle to have such limited range of motion 
if I want to shoot from that NBA logo, right? So I will really struggle shooting like long range shots with such a high set point, right? The reason why I need such a high set point because usually from close range, defense will be really tight on me, okay? There's also gonna be a lot of help defense coming in. So I wanna be able to rise up and shoot over the defender, right? So now, as I'm moving back to that deep range, right? Now I wanna improve my range of motion with my shooting arm. So that's when you will see players lowering that set point to like right about here. I mean, some players like Steph, Dame, their set, like Kyrie, their set points, Trey Young, their set point is like right about here, like almost in front of their nose, eyes level. So that way, now they have a little bit more range of motion with that right arm or left arm. So they are gonna push, so they are gonna have more of a push when they shoot it, right? So that's what's gonna allow them to yet again, generate more power on their shot, right? So it's gonna be really tough for us unless we're like a LeBron, Kawhi, Kobe, Michael, right? Unless we're those guys that are have you know really strong upper body six six plus, then you know those guys are able to compensate for that with their natural strength, right? So those guys are able to have higher set point on deeper shots. But you know, for us normal people, like for us guards especially, it's really hard to have such high set point when we shoot it from deep. So that's why we would lower that set point. So now we can really have more range of motion and more push on that shot. And my third key element will be my momentum. So, you know, there were like few instances that I've ever seen players being almost at the NBA low and it was just Dame for the most part. That he was just stationary and then he just shot it, right? Without any momentum going into his shot. But for the most part, with other players like Trey Young, Steph, even Dame too, right? Most of those players, they have some kind of momentum going into their shot. Whether they just, you know, run up and down the court and they catch it on the move and then they shoot it, or they bring in that ball off the dribble, they having that momentum going into their shot, right? So momentum is really important. What works for me really well and what allows me to generate a lot of power on my shot, it is a skipping footwork. So every time I would bring that ball down, and if you want to shoot it from deep, I would have that quick skip, which will allow me to, you know, have a really good rhythm and really good flow going into my shot. But we can also go like a one-two, right, but without a skip. So we also can go like a one-two and then shoot. So it depends on which footwork you prefer. For me personally, it is a skip. I don't know why, but it just allows me to have so much fluidity and so much rhythm going into that shot. It's just like everything for me starts to like flow seamlessly, perfectly into my shot. So for some other players, one, two might be a little bit more comfortable. Might bring you a little bit more ability to generate power on your shot. So just depends, can do both too, right? So it just depends on what works for you and depends on the situation. Or, you know, off the catch can be same thing, right? Off the catch, can be same thing, skip, catch, shot, or it can just be a regular one, two, shot. Hop into my shot, I mean, maybe, maybe. I'm personally not a big fan of a hop. I don't really see a lot of players hop when they shoot like logo range shots. It's mostly either skip or one, two. I rarely see somebody go here, two feet hop. So maybe somebody does that. I haven't really seen it as much. But like I said, again, I don't think there's any right or wrong as to how you wanna generate momentum going into your shot. Just some people are different. I know some people prefer one, two, and they hate skipping, right? For me, it's opposite. So just depends what works for you. So uh, momentum is really important because very rarely you will just come to a complete stop, wait and shoot it or catch that ball Stand at the logo like this, like Dame, like Dame is just a different specimen when it comes to that, right? Like that, that one shot that he took without any sort of momentum, it was, it was nuts, okay? I mean, but you don't see him take those shots very often. It's mainly with a lot of momentum going into his shot. Now this fourth one, it can get a little controversial, okay? I'm mainly saying that because I have watched a lot of film 
on players like Dame, Steph, and Trey Young when they shoot it from deep. And it is something that for me personally, that's the only way I can shoot it from deep. And that is not leaving my follow through after my release, okay? However, before you go in the comments and start saying, well, but I saw clips, yes, yes. Trey, Steph, and Dame at times do leave the follow through after the release. That is correct. However, I would put a ratio on that. I would say probably 75 to 80% of their shots is coming from really far away. I would say that they just shoot it and then they just bring their arms down. They don't really stand there like this and hold their follow through. For me personally, what I've noticed is if I choose to hold it, it almost like as soon as I release that ball and I hold it, it's like the ball starts to lose power immediately. I'm not sure what that is. I mean, I'm not really like a scientist. I didn't really like go to like trying to like discover these facts, but I just like learned based on shooting a lot of shots that if I shoot like this, shoot it and then drop it, my ball just for some reason has so much more power. But then if I would go like this, now I'm like start shorting my shot real bad. However, let me go back to my initial point. If you feel like follow through helps you, hold, hold it, it's up to you. But if you feel like me, that that follow through is, is like, it's kind of taken away from the power on your shot, try to do this. Try to just flick it up there and then drop it. And I promise you, that might work for you. So. I'm literally addressing this because I want people to understand that sometimes follow through is not really that important, okay? And just don't let somebody tell you that this is a bad shot, especially from deep. Like I can play you hours of footage where Dame, Steph, Trey Young, they just hear and then drop it, okay? So again, this can go either way. It's a controversial topic. So I'd say try both see which one allows you to have a little bit more power on your shot and then go from there. And then fifth key element is also controversial, can go also both ways and that is my base. So if we watch a lot of the Dame Lillard shots, Dame does tend to have for the most part slightly wider base when he shoots it, right? Not all the time, sometimes he does have a narrower base when he shoots it from deep. But what I've noticed with a lot of his shots, if he does have like, you know, I wouldn't say it's like overly wide base, but it's slightly wider than what a Trey or Steph would have when they shoot because those guys have much narrower base when they shoot. And for me personally, it is the exact same way. I cannot shoot or generate enough power on my shot if I have a you know wide shoulder width base on my shot. What allows me to generate power is that narrower base. So like not my normal base, but something slightly narrower, narrower like this here. So from here, I can really generate some power and can really like flow that energy upwards on my shot. So yet again, back to my initial point, try both, see what works, right? Not, <coughs> not everybody's gonna be the same way, right? For some, you might be able to generate a whole lot of power from this kind of base here. For some of you, it might be here. For some of you, it might be here, right? It just depends what allows you to generate more power when you're shooting it from deep. For me, it's so my normal base, I would say my normal base is like right about here. That's my normal base on my catch and shoot shots. I'd say if I'm bringing it the ball and I'm shooting it from deep, I'd say I'd probably be like this, slightly narrower than my normal base. So try it out, see which base works for you. There's no right or wrong, just what works for you. And then stick to it. And then I would add like an honorable mention uh, element, and that is having a slight lean forward on my shot. So when I'm gonna you know, step into it, I would have slight lean forward when I shoot. Not a whole lot, but just, you know, using that momentum to kind of like push me forward a little bit, obviously jump forward a little bit and just have slight lean, slight lean 
going forward, which will obviously be an advantage to us so that way we can generate more power into our shop. And then lastly, in order to you know tie all of this together, is we want to make sure that we go into the weight room and we develop not just our upper body, not just our arms, but also our legs because a lot of that power will be generated by our lower body. So getting in the weight room is key. It is really important and it will expedite the process of you being able to shoot it from deep. Yes, the technique is great. Yes, the momentum, the timing is really important. But adding some muscle and adding some strength, right, into that shot will allow you to be a little bit more accurate and will allow you to speed up that process to extend that range to the NBA logo. So I'm not warmed up yet. I'm still kind of a little stiff, but I will show you guys, you know, two examples. One of me getting to my shot off the dribble and then one of me getting into my shot off the catch and then shooting it from deep. 